Hello and a very warm welcome to this Hive 2 tutorial. In this fifth episode I talk about function generators and shape sequencers. They are like they are envelope generators and modulators at the same time. But let's get started. Okay, so with a lot of things in um, in Hive 2, things are mirrored with uh, several exceptions. For example, the filters, they are a little bit different on the left and on the right side. And here the function generators are also different. So we are talking about this area here. And here's the function generator 1, here's function generator 2. And here are the shape sequencer, or is this um, shape sequencer, sequencer area. So according to the handbook, function generators are inspired by Eurorack, so the modular world. And the function generators are fulfilling different things, or let's say they completing each other. Because on the function generator one, we have an envelope, then we have a rise and we have a still function. And on the function generator that's why we have an envelope as well but we have a fall and a move function so let's initialize this and make it a little bit um, bigger so you can see everything nice and clear let's put that like uh, this maybe and we use the envelope the fall and the move and with the envelope here's attack and decay and if I press um, a key you see nothing because I didn't uh, modulate something so I take the cutoff use the envelope to modulate the cutoff like this and now you see these functions so the envelope this this line is attack on decay and you see the attack and the decay phase then another um, function is fall and fall outputs normally a zero here and if the envelope is falling it outputs a one so it can react on a falling envelope the move function down here in this area um, outputs always a zero and if the envelope is moving in any direction it outputs a one so you see it's start moving here still moving still moving ends moving here and then it outputs a zero again so that's mainly the um, uh, difference between oh I should have put that here on like this um, that's the difference um, between function 2 and function 1 and I show you the different right difference right now let's initialize it again and use the function generator like this and output the same like envelope here rise here still here then turn off the envelope modulating it like this and you see the still function already outputs a zero and um, if I play now a note you see the function envelope here and the function envelope one attack phase decay phase then the rise function outputs always a zero and when the envelope rises goes up it outputs a one until it stops going up doing something else like falling down then it outputs a zero and if it's not moving it outputs a zero as well and with the still function if nothing happens so no moving then it outputs a zero if it start to move up and down up or down then it outputs a zero 
as long as it moves somewhere it outputs a zero and if it stops moving it outputs a, a one so this is the complete opposite to function generator 2 on this side because here we have fall to rise and move to still so that's already the function here they're very simple but um, in combination with a lot of things this could be very complex okay then we have um a third dial here to the attack and decay this is the slope and the, with the slope you can manipulate the attack and the decay phase um, on the same time and when you use that and you turn this to the right and then play a note so I turned it to the right side so um, it gets some pressure from the right side so it turns this side to a um, convex convex curve and this side to a concave curve and if I turn that to the other side to the left side and play another note it does the same thing just in opposite direction so it's on the left side so it pushes from the left side to a um, concave attack and convex um, decay so this is not the only manipulation you could manipulate um, for example the slope with itself or with other things so you just you're always to, um, able to manipulate this in various ways but this is like integrated uh, manipulation of uh, attack and decay phase so underneath those um, dials there are two, two um, further fields one is input and one is mode and um, the, these are dependent to each other and let's di discuss um, first the mode field without an, uh, another uh, input source except nodes or keys but this is not meant by input and if you click on the envelope you have six different options in here and you can categorize those six options in three categories um, the one is envelope and one shot and uh, these envelopes just playing the envelope so if i play just place the envelope one shot the same Maybe do it a little bit quicker here in this example. And maybe I should use, so you can hear, didn't recognize that, like this. So now you can hear it really properly. I think you, you got the idea because you saw it in before. Okay, so envelope and one shot are the same without some input here then we have the cycle modes and those are just loop modes and the cycle on off loop modes as well like this then oops then we have the follow modes and um, the normal follow reacts on the input and as long as I'm pressing a key or the note is still playing it remains on the highest on that yeah let's let's just play a note then it remains on the highest level like this and as soon as I release the note, the decay phase starts like this. So if I put a longer decay phase. So it sustains above. I release the key. Or I could just press the, the key short or play short notes. So it starts with the attack phase. And as soon as I release the note, um, it starts with the decay phase so 
um, the follow gate is a little bit similar. It reacts on the input, but as soon as I um, release the key or the node is finished, it remains on that level I uh, release the key, for example. These are the modes um, without any input. So if you now select an input and you can click on that and they get a lot of input sources, or you just uh, take, for example, LFO1, put it in here, so this is the input source. So with the envelope, there's something, maybe I put, I put the LFO on here and just use the, maybe we don't need the function right here, so I put that on none so you see it more clear. So I reduce the speed here a little bit. So this is, the envelope is played and this, as soon the um, the input crosses from, from minus to plus the zero line here the envelope is triggered and if this is quicker and you see it doesn't wait until it finishes it's just triggered triggers it like this so the one shot is a li little bit different because the input triggers the envelope but the input has to wait um, that the envelope finishes, and then the next crossing from minus to plus will um, trigger the envelope again. So I'll press a key now and hold it. So you see it triggers the envelope and in between there is a gap. Let's make it a little bit slower. So every time it triggers here, it increase the speed of the envelope, for example, but it's only triggered when there is a crossing from minus to plus. A little bit longer and a little bit faster. Like this, for example. And at a certain point, it doesn't matter if the input is very fast, you always get the whole envelope played here. Like that. Okay, then the cycle modes, the loop modes. So, um, this is just a, a loop with the uh, input and you see there's sometimes with this crossing um, the envelope will be uh, re-triggered. So the envelope is playing in a loop and this crossing from minus to plus is um, re-triggering the envelope. Here, like here, you see here, don't hear that exactly, but you can see it, it re-triggers the envelope. So with the cycle on off, it's a loop mode as well. But there's something special with it. Let's take it like that. So there is as well the, the um, re-triggering of the envelope when it crosses from minus to plus, like here. And the envelope is repeating until it goes back from plus to minus. And then the level will be hold, the, the modulation will be hold, for example. But the um, 
uh, the um, envelope is still going on, but you can't hear it because the level is here hold. And as soon the input crosses zero again, you can the, the modulation will be continued. So there is some modulation in between or some um, the envelope in between here like that. But here the you hear the modulation again. So that's the big difference between um, a cycle trigger and cycle on off. Then we have the follow mode. And the follow mode with an input is a lag generator, slew, mit, slew limiter, or I call it a smoothie. Don't kill me because I say, say that. Because normally if you have an input like um, saw wave, for example, because that's the easiest way to see it or you know, to hear it as well, you can smooth that that um, harsh edge here we're turning the attack you see it gets smoothed out like um, like a little bit laggy or, or a slew limiter like this and the same with the decay and for sure you can use the slope as well. And you can see the zero crossing is as well something important. And the release here just continues with that behavior. So the follow gate uh, reacts on the input and if the gate is off, it stays on that level. So let's try it without the slope, maybe. Maybe again a triangle. Like this. Just pressing and releasing a key. So there's important the release here with the um, envelope generator of the uh, amp. Okay, that's everything um, with the function generators. So let's um, initialize that again. So we start from a blank. Um, a sequencer like this, maybe first like this. Okay, so we have um, a shape sequencer A, B, C, and D, left and right side, and in between we have the um, shape step sequencer. And um, there are eight steps. And um, you can uh, define which steps you're using with um, selecting the steps you want to use. That's very simple. Just press on it and add it or remove it, for example. Then you have segment types here. If you click on that, um, you see in the hexagon the different segment types. This is a sawtooth. This is a triangle and this is a rectangle. Um, so you can, for example, double click on the icon of the step sequencer and then it words the step, for example. So you can just create like a lot of uh, triangles, for example, like this, just with a double click. Then you can um, change the left value here and the right value where you can, for example, um, manipulate the amount that you want to uh, modulate. Then you can curve the segment like this as well with the other segments like this, for example. On this segment, you can define the pulse width. Like this, and with a double click in the hexagon, you reset the curve again. 
So with the mouse wheel, you can create some more sub segments like this, for example, and those you can change the left and right values as well. And uh, another nice, nice thing is that you, if you, that you see, if you click on a segment, you see the um, previous and the next segment. So you could, for example, do this. So you have a smooth transition from one segment to the other, for example, or for example, if you do it like this, it's the same. And yeah, that's that's a very nice feature, and you could just scroll here with those elements here and you see which segment is selected. So there are some um, other fields here in the shape sequencer. They are all the same, like the um, a trigger here. There's a poly and a single trigger. Poly means that every uh, key press or every note gets its own step sequence. So if I use this, for example, with the poly and I press a key, uh, maybe I use the cutoff as well so you can hear it or again. Now I press the second key. So every key gets its own um, sequence and if I change it to single, they're all playing in the same sequence. Like this. So let's put that back on poly. Then the order, there's they are looping. So if I press this, it just plays from left to right. With the pool, loop backwards, it plays from right to left, repeating. Then there is a random, just plays random segments. Then there is a one shot, so just play only one time. And then it stops at the beginning, I think. Let's, let's uh, try that. Oh no, it ends here on the last value, like this. Okay, then we have uh, one by one. This is on every note or on every key press. It just goes to the next step like this. And then there is a one random. This is a one by one and random combination. So every time I press a key or a note is incoming, it just selects by random another step or the same step just random. Time base is the sync speed. So you have uh, 32th, 16th, 8th, 4th, half, um, whole notes, uh, and so on. <laughs> and there's a height option. And the height option is something um, for some special function or special options, or let's say hidden options that are not obvious in, in this view, but you can reach them, for example, in the, in the um, modulation matrix. And in the modulation matrix, you see if you click right on uh, this area, you see here a shape sequencer and there are the additional options. There are four rates. So the rates are this, uh, with the rates you can um, manipulate the speed of a, of, a, uh, of a sequence, of one of those um, sequences. This is um, for A, B, C and D, for all four. Then you have four um, options that are only mapped to one of the shape sequences. This is left value and right value, A and B left value A, right value B. These are, these are those um, things, like on both sides here. 
Then you have um, the curve, and the curve is uh, this uh, for shape C. You only can use that function with shape C. Then you have the ratchet function. The ratchet function is this function if you use the mouse wheel and put some uh, subsequence um, in. These are called ratchets. So you only could use the this function um, D or this shape sequencer um, and D to you to change those subsegments. And um, for the halt option where we came from, you have to use, let me see, as far as I know, the um, position like this one. The position A, B, C, D is when you want to manipulate um, with which step you have to start the sequence. For example, and if I, I use the A with the with this, so I use maybe like this one. This is really fast. Why is it so fast? Okay, that's why. That's like this, and if I want to um, manipulate the shape A, I use, for example, um, a shape B, or maybe the, uh, the, the same, for example. I have to look at that. Wait. Um, here's shape A. Then, for example, the raid A. And I could use that as well, for example, with the shape B, if I just use here shape B. But I have to put a step here. Um, under the under one of those steps from shape A. If I don't put a shape under one of those steps, for example, I have this, or let's say I have this one, and I put it here. Manual says I have to put it underneath. <laughs> so, but here is it, it is working. Maybe there was an update. And uh, the update was not is not reflected in the manual. Well, that's that's cool. You don't have to put exactly on on those steps where A is as well. You can put just where you want, so it's more flexible in using those uh, function in this um, uh, step sequencer. So, and the same goes with. Um, The position, for example, and um, as I explained, uh, the other um, functions, left value, right value, curve, and ratchets. So that's um, everything to the function generators and the shape sequences. There are a lot of um, very easy functions, but if you start to combine, combine them, um, this could be really complicated and complex. But uh, understanding those function in its uh, on its own, they're really really simple. So with everything, if you start combining things, things getting very complex. And most of the time, if you do that in the right way, um, very very interesting. So uh, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you liked that video. I hope you uh, you get what, what those uh, functions and um, sequences are doing. And uh, please uh, leave a comment. I'm always uh, pleased if somebody's writing me just a little bit feedback is always really, really great. And uh, thanks to all the people that gave me some feedback. And I hope I see you soon in the next video. Stay healthy. See you. Ciao, ciao. Thank <laughs> you.